Hello everyone. The real third temple, or the real temple. This video may well blow you away. There's some things that I'm going to mention in here which I'm sure most, most people probably have never heard in their lives, which is pretty interesting because it involves some, some of the biggest parts of our Christian faith. The day of Pentecost. Where did that happen? I just want to show you this very quickly. There's some deep information in this video. So let's uh, get on with it. So this, originally I learned some of this information here from a Bible study I did in Jerusalem. It was an excellent Bible study. So I've left the link in the description of this Bible study. If you want to get the deeper information of where I'm getting this, some, some of what I'm showing you here from, uh, go, go and look at the Bible study in Jerusalem in the link and you can get the ins and outs of the information. But I'm gonna quickly skim through some of this and show you my conclusion. Shavuot, Pentecost, same thing. So Shavuot and Pentecost are the same thing. Shavuot is the giving of the Torah. So we had Mount Sinai in the book of Exodus with Moses who went up the mountain, got the Torah, the giving of the Torah, Mount Sinai. Then of course what happened there was the golden calf and you had the people who all came together and worshipped the golden calf. So. 3,000 people died. We saw fire at this event. There was a false unity of the golden calf and the law was written on stone. So this, was, this is what the festival of Shavuot uh, represents. Mount Sinai, the giving of the Torah. Now, Pentecost, Mount Zion, I'm not going to go too much into this, but there is good evidence to say that Mount Zion is also the name for the Temple Mount, the Holy Mountain of God. Now there's many reasons for that, which I'm not going to go into here, but we're going to go on that presupposition here, that um, Mount Zion is the Temple Mount, is the Holy Mountain of God. Today in Jerusalem, Mount Zion is listed as elsewhere, but that's because they changed the location of it. The Romans, I believe. So we've got Mount Zion, which is the Temple Mount. There's plenty of reason to believe that Pentecost actually happened on Mount Zion, on the Temple Mount. Now, this might be something you've not heard before. Because we've heard of course about the upper room and it being near the Temple Mount. But there's good reason to believe that Pentecost actually happened on the Temple Mount itself. Now again, if you want to hear more about the reasons for that, go and listen to the Bible study in full and you will hear. But Pentecost happening on the, on the Temple Mount. Now what happened in comparison, we can compare these two. Uh, Mount Zion and Mount Sinai, the giving of the Torah, the giving of the law, and Pentecost. 3,000 died here, the golden calf. 3,000 were baptized at Pentecost. We saw fire in Mount Sinai in Exodus. We saw fire Mount Zion in Pentecost. There was a false unity, the golden calf, there was a true unity at Pentecost, one accord in the spirit. The law on stone, the law on hearts. But actually, there's a lot of correcting the mistakes here. 3,000 died because of the golden calf here. 3,000 were baptized at Pentecost. The numbers, exactly. Um, correcting the mistakes, false unity of the golden calf, true unity of the church, one accord in the spirit. So there's a lot of comparisons, and that's not all of them. There's more than there's more than even that. A lot of comparisons between Mount Sinai experience and the Mount Zion experience with Pentecost. Let's move on to the next page. The Feast of Pentecost on Mount Zion it was a one-day feast. 
is the 50th day, seven weeks after Shiaf offering of Passover and the Feast of Pentecost. So everyone from all over the world, different parts of the world came to this feast. So they were coming from all over the world on pilgrimages. So you can start to see how you would have had all the different languages of the 70 nations represented there, which in Jewish terms represents the whole world. Now remember, I'm not a pastor. I'm just repeating some of the information that I, I gained from a Bible study here. So Mount Zion, the Temple Mount, in Hebrew, it means the hill of the house. Now that's key to remember for a bit later on. The hill of the house. The house on the hill, the hill of the house. The house, what is the house? The house of God, the temple. So this would have been the second temple. And uh, so we had all of the, these people uh, who had come on pilgrimages to Jerusalem for this feast and they were coming to the Temple Mount including the disciples and the others but also other people from all over the world to the hill of the house Mount Zion okay so what happened on Pentecost I'm sure I don't need to tell you but there was a mighty wind there was a fire from heaven. And of course, the tongues of fire, which rested on the people. We had the 120 people, uh, including Jesus' followers and others. But you had, so you had these thousands of people that had come to Jerusalem. I'm gonna read this quick passage in Acts. This is what we're talking about, this event of this day of Pentecost, chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house, the house where they were sitting. Hmm. The house, the hill of the house, the house of God. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven. Remember, that's the seventy nations represented. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marvelled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all those which speak Galileans? And how we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. And then it goes on to list some of the places. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known to you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing as it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Uh, so this is the event that's happening here. And it's on the Temple Mount. So with this in mind, we've got all these people who travelled as a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Seventy nations represented the languages that they're speaking, literal languages that they're speaking, that other people can hear who are there they're filled with the Holy Spirit God is doing something here with them that, he, that hasn't happened before this is a miraculous amazing incident that's happening it's, the, it's part of the birth of the church 
So fire falls from heaven. Well, some of the items were missing from the second temple. So this is quite symbolic that the fire never fell on the altar of sacrifice in the second temple because the items were missing. But on this day, the fire fell on the people. So you see that almost this is like a transition in a sense because the body of Christ is a new temple. So in a sense it seems to be like this is a transition from the old of course and then the the old temple fell at 70 AD after this but the body of Christ is a new temple. These people, the church is the temple. These people were being filled by the Holy Spirit, the church, the, the disciples, the Christians. I believe it was 120 of them. On the Temple Mount, on Mount Zion. Let's look at these, we've got three verses here which, which explain this a little bit more. The first one is in Matthew 5 14 to 15 it opens up some of these verses you'll see what i mean jesus said ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house listen to that you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid but it giveth light unto all that are in the house some of these verses really begin to open up 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God and ye are not your own know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the last one 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ wherefore also is it contained in the scripture behold I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone elect precious and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvellous light. So there you go, body of Christ, a new temple, right before our eyes, on the Temple Mount there, uh, on this day of Pentecost. How amazing is that? <laughs> and the Bible verses corroborate so much. But this is where it gets really interesting in terms of the day and age we're living in. Because it doesn't just stop here. When something is the truth, it doesn't just stop there. It opens up more. And what I began to realise is that there's propaganda in the mainstream media, in movies and television, which has been going on for a while. Now remember what we said was the name of that place. The house of the hill. The hill of the house. What was it? The hill of the house. In Hebrew, the house. House of God. The house on the hill. Now what do we have? We have a theme of horror films that are around today which is propaganda and they're called things like the haunting of hill house house on haunted hill the haunting the haunting movie had a house in it which they called hill house house on a hill house on haunted hill the haunting of hill house <laughs> And it's just like, you just see this stuff over and over again, this common thread. And it's like, 
there's two things I think. It's either mocking and blaspheming the body of Christ, the church, Jesus, as always. So it's either mocking and blaspheming or it's showing propaganda which is leading towards the uh, the building of an, a new temple, a new house, which is Antichrist. Again, it's either inverting, turning good into evil and evil into good, and in, inverting and blaspheming Jesus and the church and the house of God and all of this, or it's showing the uh, building of a new house uh, on the hill, which it just shows, doesn't it? The the temple, the third temple business is not good at all. It portrays an evil house built on a hill and it shows a lot of fear and terror. That is the common threads between these movies. The Haunting of Hill House, House on a Haunted Hill, The Haunting with Hill House. So, I mean, it's just, it's just very clear. It's just over and over again, we're just seeing this propaganda. So, Third Temple, an Antichrist agenda. That's what we're seeing. Third Temple, an Antichrist agenda. The destruction or the, the mocking, the blasphemy of the old and eradicating the Christ, Christianity and the building of the new one world temple. Whether or not that will be a literal thing, I don't know. Could be, yeah, I, I believe so. I believe there will be a temple, but that's just my personal belief. But um, what do you think? I don't know. There could be a third temple, or there may not be. It may all be symbolic and figurative. But I believe there will be a third temple. So this is what we're seeing, this propaganda. And do you see how it all relates to like a, a inversion of Pentecost of the Antichrist spirit, the man of lawlessness, the abomination of desolation, how it all ties into this and how it all comes from the fact, well, from this idea, which seems very, very plausible when you put it all together, that Pentecost happened on the Temple Mount, on Mount Zion, and that this kind of inverted Pentecost of the Antichrist spirit is being shown and the building of a counterfeit temple when we know that the true temple is the body of Christ. The real temple is Jesus' body, the body of Christ. So that concludes this little talk. The real temple is the body of Christ. Thank you for listening. I hope it was interesting and God bless you.